Fellas, since we've just had UFC 296, there's been a lot of talk of who should fight who next. So I'm going to be matchmaking every fighter on the main card, everyone who lost, everyone who won. And I'm going to be putting them into matchups, which I think personally suit them the best. Um, the ones that lost, it'll either get them back on track or some of them might even have to retire. And then the ones that win, it's the ones that they deserve to have or... You, you see what I mean? So we'll go in there with the first fight. Let's just quickly go in there. Josh Emmett and Bryce Mitchell. I'll match them both up. We'll start off with Bryce Mitchell. Um, obviously, Josh Emmett knocked him out in the first round, though. It was a brutal, brutal knockout. One of the most brutal I've seen all year, to be honest. It was twitching. And for that reason, he's going to be out for about six months, about half a year. Um, and he should be, because if he fights anytime soon, and I hope the UFC keep him out, because if he fights anytime soon, he's going to genuinely put his MMA career at stake because that was it was brutal I'm sure he's concussed he was twitching he's not ready to fight anytime soon and for that reason I can't really match him up against an exact opponent so I'm going to say take six months off and then we can start talking about who he fights about based on whoever's ranked top 10 to 15 uh, maybe it's going to be someone like Nathaniel Wood Laron Murphy or anyone else in the top 15 who's yeah just just in the top 15 of featherweight so take some time off get healed get ready Get back in about six months, or if maybe even longer, to be honest with you. You might even have to take a bit longer than that, but at least six months take off. In terms of Josh Emmett, he just got a brutal knockout, um, and he needs to enter back into the title mix, but obviously he is on a two-fight losing streak before this fight by Yaya Rodriguez and Ili Taporia. So I think the perfect matchup for Josh Emmett is the loser of Movzo Evelo over and Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen and Evelo over having a fight night early 2024. Um, if Arnold Allen loses, then he will be on a two-fight losing streak to Holloway and Evloev. And he's fighting Josh Emmett, who was previously also on a two-fight losing streak to um, Ili Tapori and Yaya Rodriguez. So it's the perfect kind of matchup for both of them. And that would be a scrap. And if Evloev, the undefeated Evloev, loses to Allen, well, he's lost to one of the best in the division. Let's put him back on track against Josh Emmett, who's not the most consistent featherweight, but is definitely a more winnable fight for him. Um, it can also mix it up with the grappling as well. So I feel like the loser of Evloev and Allen is a perfect fight. And if Josh Emmett can beat one of those then that's definitely going to get him back in the title mix. Uh, I'm not saying he deserves a title shot from that, but you know what I mean? He's going to start entering the top five area. Um, so yeah, that's the perfect fight that I got for both of them. Emmett should just... Uh, sorry, Mitchell should just take some time off and Emmett fight the loser of Evelo Evan Allen, maybe for a main event of a fight night as well. And that's what I think should happen. Next fight, Tony and Paddy Pimlet. Tony's now on a seven-fight losing streak. Paddy Pimlet defeated him by decision. It was a pretty dominant decision as well. He was, you know, just out grappling in the entire fight, dominating him with grappling. And to be honest, it was beating him with striking as well. Nearly finished him in the first. Tony Ferguson needs to retire. We say this every fight. We've been saying this since the Michael Chandler fight, and he just hasn't. It feels like every time he fights, he gets worse and worse. And it's got to the point where you have to retire now. Because if you don't retire, it's going to get to the stage where he's going to be ended, ending up fighting people who we've never heard of, unranked people who we've never heard of, and just losing to them, which isn't worth it. If there's a time you ever have to retire, it's now. I remember last year when Ferguson beat Chandler, people were saying... Who cares if he lost to Chandler? He'd still be the shell of people like Pimlet. And now he's lost to Pimlet. Just retire, man. You've had a good 12-fight winning streak. Now you're on a 7-fight losing streak. The UFC should honestly cut him at this point. And that's not even just to be disrespectful. Let's just save his legacy. Retire before it's too late. I mean, it already is too late, but just retire, man. I'm, don't, I don't, I'm not even interested in seeing him fight anymore because we know whenever he fights, it's going to be a lamb going to a slaughterhouse. So just make him retire. And for Paddy Pimlet... I've gone for Bobby Green, and I know you're probably thinking Bobby Green would beat the absolute living shit out of Paddy Pimlet, and to be honest with you, I agree, but I think, who else is there? You're on a four, what is it, five-fight winning streak in the UFC, I think he's on, he's just beaten Tony Ferguson, which is a big win, I think Bobby Green is a good opponent for him, now, the reason I say Bobby Green is because he's just been finished by Jalen Turner, and he's just been brutally finished by Jalen Turner, another big lightweight like Pimlet, now, I'm not comparing both of them, Jalen Turner would KO Pimlet, but... I feel like if that knock that, that knockout that he got against Turner could really affect him, and he might not even be good in the future. And I'm not saying send Bobby Green in there immediately after he's just been knocked out and get him concussed. I'm obviously give, give him some time off. I say book it mid 2024, around summer 2024 time, kind of like as long as um, Bryce Mitchell, maybe not as long, but. Pimlet also got a little bit cut in the, in the Ferguson fight as well. So let's book them both mid-2024 because if Pimlet can get past Bobby Green, he's got past a legit contender. Um, and that's when he's going to start entering the top 10 or top 15 at least if he can beat Bobby Green. And if Bobby Green can, keep, can beat Pimlet, um, he's just beating a massive hype train and he's back on track after the gel internal loss. So it's a good fight for both of them. 
It's also got a lot of hype around the matchup as well. They'd be talking shit to each other. Even if that was on a pay-per-view, the press conference would be sick because they'd just be going at each other. So I feel like Pimlet and Bobby Green is good because who else are we going to match Pimlet up against at this point? Tough test for Paddy. Extremely tough test for Paddy. But yeah, let's do that mid-2024. And in terms of Ferguson, he needs to retire. Next fight, Shafka and Steven Thompson. Shafka obviously defeated St uh, Stephen Thompson, Wonderboy, by a second round submission, as I thought. He's a submission artist, he's got 18 wins, all of them coming by way of finish, undefeated. He needs a title shot, man. He's finished Jeff Neal, he's finished Stephen Thompson. He shouldn't have to prove himself anymore. Um, he's, I'm pretty sure he's the first guy to submit Stephen Thompson as well in the UFC, so I think we give Shafka a title shot. However... Not just yet. I think we make him wait. The same way that Bilal Mohamed had to wait for Leon Edwards and Corby Covington, Shavkat Rachmanov should have to wait for Bilal Mohamed and uh, Leon Edwards. He should have to wait now. He shouldn't be able to skip the queue and go over Bilal Mohamed because Bilal Mohamed is just beating Gilbert Burns, which in my opinion is a better win than Stephen Thompson, even though maybe Burns was a bit injured in the fight. So we'll do Bilal versus Leon Edwards. Um, Shavkat Rachmanov can be the backup for that fight. He can go away and be the backup, and whoever wins that fight will fight Shavkat for the belt. And yeah, he's earned himself a, fight, uh, a title shot. Fair play to him. Pretty good win. In terms of Stephen Thompson, I think the UFC should just pick him up, chuck him in the storage, and use him for fun fights only. I don't know how many fun fights there are. I heard MVP's just joined the UFC, so that could be a really fun fight for him. But his title run is over. He's not going to get a title shot. He's not going to win the belt. He's 40 years old. He hasn't got too long left. Let's just let Stephen Thompson have some fun fights. Maybe it's fight night main events every now and then. We just have a fun Stephen Thompson fight, kind of like the Kevin Holland one. And um, yeah, that's a great way to treat Thompson for the end of his career. We, we know his title aspirations are done. Let's stop feeding him contenders and absolute killers. Let's just give him fun fights. And I'm not saying easy fights, but let's give him fun fights. So um, so yeah, he can have a nice end to his career because he's, a, he's, a, he's a, an amazing striker, Stephen Thompson, and he deserves it. Next fight, Pantoja Roy Val. Um, yeah, it was pretty dominant by Alejandro Pantoja. The grappling was dominant and he was able to beat Brandon Roy Val. So I think the winner of Moreno and Albazi, and I'm pretty sure the UFC are going to do this as well, is going to take on Pantoja, which makes sense. The only problem I have with Moreno and, Al and Pantoja is what if Moreno wins? If Moreno beats Albazi and then goes out there and beats Pantoja, that means Moreno would have won one of the fights and Pantoja would have won the other three. So what is Pantoja meant to do from there? Are we supposed to see five fights between them both? I understand not all of them were in the UFC. I think what someone's on the Contender Series or maybe the Ultimate Fighter. I don't exactly know, but if I don't want to see them fight five times. That's my only issue. I'm sick of Moreno pushing people out the division. It should be him pushing out the division, but I think we do Moreno versus Albazi, which has been booked already, and the winner of that can take on Pantoja for the belt, and I wouldn't even mind seeing Amir Albazi fight Pantoja. I think that would be a fun grappling matchup. Um, yeah, we can have that for the second defense of Pantoja's career. And if Pantoja is able to beat Moreno again, Moreno should stay away from Pantoja the same way Holloway staying away from Volkanovski because we don't want to see that fight again. And in terms of Brandon Roy Val, I think he should fight the winner of Mohamed Makaev and Alex Perez. Originally, I was thinking he should fight the loser of Moreno and Albazi, but as good as a fight that is... Listen, I want to see some new contenders fights. Like We can't just keep matching the four against each other over and over again. I know this um, Manel Cap and Kai Kaur France, but I want them going against each other because there's a rivalry there. I want to see the winner of Mohamed Makayev and Alex Perez, which I think he's booked for March 4th. I want to see them face Brandon Royval. I think if Makayev can get past Alex Perez... Um, and then he can then he fights Brandon Royval. That's a perfect number one contender fight for him because Brandon uh, Makayev's only like twenty three years old. He's really young as well. He's like twenty three years old for a flyweight. That's not ex you know it's not shocking, but still really young. One of the youngest in the UFC, undefeated as well. Finished a lot of his fights. So I think we do Mohamed Makayev or the winner of Mohamed Makayev and Alex Perez versus Brandon Royval. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's another chance for Brandon Royval to get on track as well. If he can beat one of those kind of up, well, Perez is, I wouldn't say Perez is an up and comer, but if he can beat Mikhaev, who's an up and comer, perfect way for Brandon Royval to get on track. So that's why I matched those two against each other in the main event Leon and Corby Covington. It's going to have to be Bala Mohammed for Leon Edwards, but I don't want to see Bala Mohammed versus Leon Edwards as a main event for a pay per view. That would be the most boring pay per view in UFC history. The fight, the build up, it would be boring. But. I still want to see it. I, I still want to see it happen. I'm not saying I want to see it for a main event of a pay-per-view. So I think we do. In 2024, Tom Aspinall versus another heavyweight, maybe the winner of Jelton Almeida and Curtis Blades in the UK. And co-main event, 
Leanne Edwards versus Bilal Mohammed for the most stacked UK card we've ever had. Two British fight uh, ta champions on the same card would be insane because I don't think Edwards and um, Bilal are going to be able to headline a pay per view. So we'll do Le Leon Edwards versus Bilal. Get it out of the way. Uh, hopefully Bilal Mohammed loses so we can just brush him off the way and bring in Shafkat for a proper main event. So let's do Leon Edwards versus Bilal Mohammed. He does deserve it. I mean, he's beaten Gilbert Burns. He finished Sean Brady. He does deserve it, whatever you think. He beat Luke as well. So we'll do Mohammed versus Edwards and Covington. He's in this weird spot. I'm not going to say retirement, but he, 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 that was an embar embarrassing performance by uh, by Bilal Mohammed. Uh, not Bilal Mohammed, uh, Colby Covington. I think he just stays on the roster, and in case a really fun fight comes along, can't, same way he had a fun fight with Masvidal, maybe a Gilbert Burns or an Ian Gary, someone that's going to give him a fun fight. I think that's what we do with Covington. His title run is done. He's had three title shots. The third one was undeserved. He's lost all of them. One of them he got finished in by Usman, so his title run is over. The fans don't, aren't even on his side anymore. No one cares for him. So for Covington, just stay on the roster, and in case it's a fun fight with a fun build-up, I don't think he should have to fight. And that is the, who I'm matching up every main card fighter against. Let me know your thoughts on these matchups. Do you agree or disagree? Personally, I think they're perfect for most fighters. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. And thank you for watching.